Well, welcome to our fifth video in a series on the Adobe DPS tools inside of Adobe InDesign. Um, this one we're going to talk about creating a slideshow, which of course you can then swipe through on an iPad or an Android device or even a Kindle. In order to create one of these, uh, obviously you're going to need some images for your slideshow, but first off, let's go ahead and let's create a new InDesign document. And we're going to go ahead and use the digital publishing intent. I'm going to remove my primary text frame, and just for this particular uh, demo, I'm going to just create a horizontal uh, layout. I'm not going to worry about alternative layouts at the moment. Okay, so when you create a slideshow inside of InDesign for the DPS suite, um, one of the things that you need to understand is, is that how a slideshow actually comes together. It's not just simply a matter of just throwing a bunch of images on the page and then uh, InDesign will automatically know you need a slideshow. It's actually a multi-step process. Uh, so to begin with, just show you here, I've got some images inside of this folder that I've got. And these images are actually just all uh, graphics from the movie Big Hero 6. And if you'll notice, they are all the same size. Now, that's not necessarily a requirement. You can certainly have images of different sizes. In fact, I'll show you a, a technique here in a minute when we add all these images, um, how you can actually make sure that you can use the fitting options so that if you do have images of different sizes, you can actually crop them or go back and edit them manually later on. But in my case, my slideshow was prepared to have images of all the same size. Second, when you go to create the slideshow, you need to make sure that all of your images are added to the document all at once. This is not just a, uh, a feature where you can just point to a specific folder and then InDesign will build it for you. You actually have to add all the images to your article first. After you've added all the articles, you have to make sure that they all stack on top of each other and then you have to convert that to what we call an object state, which I'll explain shortly. And then after you've done that, then you can then tell InDesign it's a slideshow and you can play around with some of the options for the slideshow in the overlay panel. So to get started, let's go ahead and add all of the images that I have here for Big Hero 6. Now if you notice, there are 21 images that I have in this. And of course you can sit here and you can start dragging and dropping them into, the, into your article one at a time and adjusting them one at a time. But to be honest with you, that's very inefficient. So let me show you a quick and easy way of doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of my images here in my folder and I'm going to drag them and drop them into my InDesign document. Now you could of course go into File, Place and select all of them, would have done the same thing. But if you'll notice now that I've dropped them, I have get a full thumbnail picture of my first graphic and then notice the little 21 in the parentheses. That tells me I have 21 graphics essentially preloaded uh, into my cursor. So if I start clicking, I can start adding images. But you know what? That's not a lot of fun. That's actually quite, kind of uh, inefficient, so to speak. And of course, I can you know drag and make my images a little bit different size if I want to. And that's, that's kind of nice. But once again, highly inefficient. So instead, uh, I'm going to show you a technique in order to add all 21 all at once. Um, and this does, of course, require the use of two different hands when you do this. It's a little bit tricky, especially if you're on a laptop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, frame that actually goes within my margins. And, and that's an important point that I'll come back to in just a minute. But I'm going to create a frame that's within my margins. So because this is an image, it's going to try to actually uh, create a proportionate frame. So I'm going to hold down the shift key as I drag to make sure that I have a frame now inside of my margins. Now I'm not going to let go of the mouse key, uh, the mouse button yet. This is an important tip. Do not let go of the shift key. Do not let go of the mouse. Now, this is where the tricky part comes in. You want to make sure as you're holding down those two things, you can actually reach the arrow keys. Now, the arrow keys, as you are creating these frames, will actually allow you to create rows and columns and essentially additional frames that you can place multiple images into. Now, I've got 21 images that I need to put in here. So I need to have enough rows and frames in order to put together 21 images. So let's see if I can do this. So if I hit the right arrow, this will create multiple columns. So you see now I've got two columns. There's three, there's four, there's five, there's six. I'm gonna make seven columns. 
And if I press the up arrow, it creates rows. So there's two rows and there's three rows. So if I did my mouth right, I now have seven columns and three rows. So seven times three is, of course, 21. So now I'm going to let go, the, I'm going to hold down the shift key still, but I'm going to let go of the mouse first and then let go of the shift key. And now, there it is, I now have 21 images all in my document all at once. So to show you how that was done again, I'm going to go ahead and create the frame, hold down the shift key so I can create a freeform shape, uh, frame within the, within the actual margin. There it is. I'm going to press my right arrow to create additional columns. There's seven columns. Press the up arrow to create two additional rows. Let go of the mouse key. Now I can let go of the shift key. And there I go. I now have all 21 graphics inside of InDesign. Now, of course, all these graphics are the wrong size and they, uh, they will need to be stacked on top of each other, but that's easy enough to fix. Now, before I move on, I do want to make a, a quick little note. Um, the gutter that is actually created in between each of these particular frames uh, is based on the column, the, the gutter option when you create, when you first set up this document. So if you're going to be using this option or this feature a lot, in your InDesign documents, and this works not just in digital publishing, by the way, but also in print intent documents as well. But if you're going to use this uh, to create like contact forms or anything like that, uh, contact sheets, excuse me, you want to make sure that you set that column setting appropriately. So back to this. The next step is I need to make sure that they're all stacked on top of each other. And not only that, but they also need to be the right size. So because they're all selected, we're going to go up here and into our alignment options and I'm going to go ahead and align it horizontally and vertically and now they're all stacked on top of each other well that's great but they're really small so what do I need to do now well because once again they are all selected if I adjust these handles I'm actually dragging all 21 frames at once neat right furthermore they're the wrong size but because they're all selected, if I right click and go to my fitting options and fill the frame proportionally, what will happen is all 21 of those graphics will now fill the frame proportionally. They will all now be cropped to just the right size. That's great. So the first step is getting all of your images into InDesign and set up properly. And that includes making sure that they're all on top of each other, they're all the same size, and of course all the images are fit into those frames correctly. The next step is we need to convert this to something called an object state. Now, the DPS tools, the folio overlay for, for slideshows, require an object state in order to work. Now, thankfully, there is an object state window here inside of InDesign. So if I click on this, what's going to happen here is, is that because I have all 21 images selected, if I click on the new button, what will happen is, is that it will create one object. Now, an object inside of InDesign can be any number of things. It could be grouped objects together, but this is a very specialized object. And it has it's an object with multiple states. So if you'll notice here, this particular object now has 21 different states in it. And a state, if you think about it this way, this object, if I were grouping these images together, all of those images would be visible all at the same time. Now, some of them may be overlapping and you can't see some of them, but they're all there all at once. A state, on the other hand, one state is visible at one time. So, in other words, if I click on the fourth state, only the graphics that are in the fourth state are visible on my stage at that time. All the other ones are essentially hidden. And this is exactly what you want in a slideshow, right? I mean, you only want the image that you're currently viewing to be visible. You don't want all the rest of the slideshow just kind of like floating out there and invisible on the page. So we've now converted this to an object state. And in the object state, if you want to change the, the order of these particular states, because the order of these states are exactly the order of your slideshow, I can now change and I can come up here and I can say, you know what, maybe I want this image of you know, the team, so to speak, and I can drag that up here at the top. So it's, it's you know, a drag and drop kind of an interface. 
makes life really easy. The other thing is, let's say, uh, you know what, I, I chose the wrong images, maybe I need to change one image, or maybe one of the images is, is cropped poorly. So let me come through here and maybe find one that maybe I just don't like the cropping of it. Um, like, let's say maybe this one, you know, you know, I don't like the way maybe that's cropped, maybe I want to move Baymax over a little bit to the left. Well, if you if you uh, choose the state in the object state, you now have the ability to actually go in there and you can change just that state. So now I can move that image over just a little bit. So then now just that state, just that image has moved, all the rest of them have remained the same. Now this is very important later on when we talk about buttons in uh, the next uh, series of screencasts where I'm going to show you how you can actually add content to an object state and how you can display content uh, using buttons. So that's our second step. We have First step is we've added all of our images, we've made sure they're on top of each other, they are the right size. Second step is we've converted it to an object state. The third step is now let's go ahead and tweak some of the slideshow options. So to do that we'll go to the folio overlay and make sure I select the object state, there we go. And when I've selected the object state, the folio overlay will automatically go to the slideshow section and you have a lot of different options here. First off, we can actually choose to autoplay the slideshow, so it'll actually cycle through all the images uh, on its own without you having to do anything, and in fact you'll notice you have a bunch of options as far as timing is concerned. Next, we can choose how the images are going to be uh, changed from one to the other. In this case, the only transition that's available to you is a crossfade transition, but you do have the ability to turn that off if you don't want it. Uh, and you also have the ability to change the speed, you know, how fast is that crossfade. Next, and this is very important, obviously if you're doing this for a DPS suite and you want to have the user have control over the slideshow, you want to make sure you enable swipe to change the image. Now, you can also choose to stop the slideshow at the very last image or at the very first image. In other words, if I get to the end of the slideshow, if I swipe left again, if I've chosen this option, it won't do anything. It'll just stay on the last image. However, by default, it's unchecked, which means if I get to the last image of my slideshow and I swipe left, it'll go, it'll loop all the way back to the very first image in the slideshow. And the exact opposite is, is the case. If I go back to the very first image of the slideshow, swipe right, it'll go back to the last image. All right, <clears throat> so that's it. Now my slideshow is ready to preview. So I'm going to go ahead and preview this and preview this on the desktop. Now let me take a minute because there are 21 images that it's trying to rasterize at the moment. Here we go. So here's my slideshow. Now to mimic the swiping action uh, on the with your mouse, you actually have to click, hold, and drag. And that's kind of cumbersome a bit. In InDesign, there it is, and that's fine. But I really want to see what this looks like on an iPad. So I'm going to show you how to actually load or test your articles on an iPad. It's actually quite simple, and the concept is called side loading. So anytime you want to side load a an article to test it onto an iPad, to do that, first off, is you need to have an iPad and you need to have it connected to your computer. Now I've got one sitting here on my desk right now and it is uh, currently connected to my computer through the, the little lightning cable that came with the iPad. Uh, and I have it currently on and here's what it looks like. Now on the iPad, one of the things that you will need to download is the free Adobe Viewer app. Now you can get this from the App Store. Uh, if you'll notice it's down there at the very uh, bottom center and it's uh, actually a little purple icon there. It looks like a, um, a little iPad with a couple of pages next to it. And that's the Adobe Viewer. You want to make sure that the Adobe Viewer is open before you go to preview it. Because if the Adobe Viewer is not open, InDesign will not recognize that the iPad is even connected. So I'm going to go ahead and tap to open that viewer up. If you notice, I have some articles that have already been sideloaded onto this. So I'm going to go ahead and let's go back here into InDesign. So with my iPad connected, with the Adobe Viewer app on the iPad open, if I go back down here to preview in my folio, click on that. Now, 
I've got the iPad. So if I click on this, it'll actually go to the iPad. Let me go back here to Reflector. And give InDesign a second, and it should go ahead and load this article up. There it is. And now I can swipe through on the iPad. And that works out well. Now, one quick note, and I made mention of this earlier in the screencast. I want to come back to this. When we added these images, I told you I was going to make a frame inside of the margins. And you can see the little white kind of frame uh, around this image. There's a good reason as to why you want to do this. When you're creating a slideshow, especially what you want to consider a full screen slideshow on an iPad, um, of course, the way you navigate through the slides is by swiping, right? That's how you navigate. The problem with this, though, is that to navigate from an article to an article inside of DPS, you have to swipe. So by creating a full screen, like full bleed, all the way to the very edge, slideshow, you don't leave any space for the user to actually swipe to the next article. If the entire page is nothing but a slideshow, you lose that, that, uh, that navigation. And that can be very frustrating for the user. So uh, a quick little rule of thumb, whenever you're creating these particular slideshows, you want to leave at the very least 36 pixels of space all the way around. And, and depending on which human interface guidelines you listen to, <clears throat> it could be as much as 50 pixels or 55. Uh, but the bare minimum, at least 36 pixels, because that's the bare minimum you need for you know your fat finger to get over there on the right hand or the left hand side to be able to swipe left or right to go from the slideshow to the next article. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's it for this particular screencast. Join us on the next one, and we'll talk about how to create buttons to generate interactive content.